struggling to take on the harder difficulties? Well, I've got a simple strategy and loadout that should make it a little bit easier for you. Okay, so I've been playing this game non-stop since it came out, and at the time of recording this video, I have around 85 hours or so spent getting my booty ragdolled around like a sentient ping pong ball. After a shitload of testing, I've figured out some of the best and consistent loadouts to run for each mission type on higher difficulties. So that's Suicide Mission, Impossible, and Helldive. You can also run this solo, and to prove that, I ran a Helldive mission solo against the Automatons. Granted, it was no walk in the park, but totally doable in a game not meant to be played solo. So let's get the weapons out of the way first, starting with your primary. Shotguns seem to be the undisputed kings here, with three of them standing out above the rest. The SG-8 Punisher from the first page of the Free Warp on, and the SG-225 Breaker from page 4 can be used interchangeably. You could pump out a little more damage overall with the 225 Breaker, but you sacrifice the ability to reload one shell at a time, sometimes forcing you to waste a little ammo on those necessary early reloads. But both are great options. Third is the SG-8S Slugger from page 8. It has all the benefits of the first pump shotgun, but sacrifices a little bit of damage for a huge range and accuracy, making those scout rifles essentially pointless. And even though it says light armor pen, it actually goes through medium. Your secondary will change based on your primary. So if you're running one of the first two shotguns, I would recommend using the P4 Senator from the first page of the premium war bond. The reason is you want to have a good ranged option for taking out the smaller enemies before they can call in backup. And this also has a medium armor pen, even though it says light. If you're using the slugger shotgun, run the P19 Redeemer from page two of the free war bond. This will help clear packs of weaker enemies if you're being swarmed. Your grenade can be whatever you want, but I would suggest the G12 high explosive. The impact grenade is great also, but can be a little finicky when you need to destroy the fabricators. Your armor will change slightly based on the enemies you're fighting, so for terminids, you definitely want light armor. Mobility is life when fighting the bugs, since they mostly only have melee attacks and the acid breath attacks can be easily outran. If you try to run heavy, it's going to be very difficult to keep distance between you and your bug entourage. For the automatons, I would suggest medium, but you can run light if you want. Heavy just doesn't seem worth it currently. You have to sacrifice too much mobility and that often just gets you killed. For armor passives, Three good ones are the engineering kit for two extra grenades, med kit for two extra stims, or democracy protects for a 50% chance to not die when taking lethal damage. All right, so before I go over the stratagems, I just want to say that they did a decent job at making pretty much all of these useful in their own way, and there isn't a one size fits all loadout. The ones I suggest are also partially from a lone wolf playstyle, even in a group setting. The reason is because coordination in public lobbies isn't consistent, so you want to be self sufficient. On top of this, I found that when doing multi-step missions like launching ICBM, you want to spread out and have each person tackle a different objective. I'll explain why after we finish going over the stratagems. First up for our stratagems is the arc thrower. I don't think people realize that this thing goes through armor and they all just run the railgun to take on big enemies. Even though the railgun is good, it runs into ammo problems in the higher difficulties, making it less reliable when you're taking on three chargers and a vile titan on top of the 30 other guys chasing you around. The arc thrower does not suffer from that problem. It uses no ammo and does not overheat. It can also hit up to three targets per shot, letting you focus the bigger enemies while it chains off and kills the smaller ones. It might not do as much damage per shot as some of the other options like the railgun or the spear, but it's consistently good. Just make sure you don't have any teammates in front of you because it absolutely does not discriminate and will murder your friends. If you have someone who is willing to coordinate with you, the recoilless rifle is a decent option as well. Stratagem number two is the shield generator pack. Now I overlooked this item for a while because of its description where it says, encloses the wearer in a spherical shield which blocks high-speed projectiles, has a limited lifetime once deployed. This is not accurate, and this thing is an easy S-tier item for higher difficulties. So this thing pretty much blocks everything, and even prevents you from being tossed around as long as the damage doesn't break the shield. I can't tell you how many times some stalker snuck up on me from behind, and would have easily killed me if this shield didn't tank those hits for me. It does have a limited amount of damage it can absorb before it goes on cooldown, but comes right back after a very short time, like maybe 10 or 15 seconds. If you're a gamer god and don't need a shield, pick up the guard dog rover for some extra free damage. The guard dog can also draw fire from the automatons and attack things while you cower behind cover because you didn't take the shield. The next stratagem is the eagle 500 kg bomb for clearing out large packs, destroying a cluster of nests, or taking out large targets like the tanks or the bile titans. The default cooldown for this I believe is 15 seconds and 8 with the first hangar upgrade. So if the first bomb doesn't kill it, just wait 8 seconds and the second one definitely will. 
We could play around a bit for our fourth since the bomb covers us for those oh shit moments. If you're still struggling to take out large targets or just want another oh shit button, the orbital rail cannon strike is a great option for taking out something large very quickly. It will one shot chargers and severely wound the bigger guys. If you want something to clear large packs of smaller enemies, pick up the orbital gas strike or the eagle cluster bomb. Enemies are very predictable so you can drop a gas strike on yourself and just bait them into it for a ton of free kills. The cluster bomb is also great because it hits a large area and comes out extremely fast, so be careful where you throw it. <laughs> With the loadout covered, let's talk about how to actually tackle Helldive difficulty. When you drop in, always make sure to call on your support items as fast as possible. You want those cooldowns back up just in case you lose all your stuff in a spicy area or you just want to give your buddies those items also. Now you might be thinking, okay guys, let's stick together and push objectives. Do not do it. It is a trap. We found it way easier to actually split up. The game will only spawn drop ships or bug breaches in one spot at a time, so one person will end up being the unlocked lucky one and have to run for their life for a while, but this gives the other three plenty of time to do the objectives and gather those precious samples. You don't get anything for hanging around as a group and spending all your time killing the endless swarms of enemies. It only wastes that valuable time you need to clear the map. And let me tell you, the end game sample grind is real, so you need that time. Also, if you see stalkers, I would highly recommend clearing out that stalker layer before moving on to other objectives. Extraction is still going to be spicy, so buckle up buttercup. It is possible to hide until the ship comes down, but that's way easier said than done with mobs swarming the extraction site. And if one person gets spotted, that hide and wait plan goes right out the window. You can do the strategy for everything besides those 10 minute defense missions. For those, you just go full tower defense across the board. Everyone takes a mortar, a rocket sentry, and an auto cannon sentry. Two people take the EMS mortar, and the other two just pick whatever sounds like fun. Like my favorite friend killing device, the Tesla tower. Now AFK until you need to bring out more sentries. We legitimately use these to take bathroom breaks with how free it is. One thing to note is the mortars do not need line of sight, so you can put these in a safe place and they will still hit the entire map. And that's it. I hope this guide helps you out. As always, the Goo Crew appreciates you and thanks you for watching.